Shut up and sit down. Hey everybody, it's Jonathan Bolano with Bolano Home over at Keller Williams. I have a special video for you today because today I am with the Cash Flow Kings. Um, these guys right here are big time investors and property managers and all the whole nine and, and everything right here in Rhode Island. Um, and they are looking to help out other investors. They're looking to increase their portfolio. They're looking to learn themselves and they're looking to grow out. Um, so these are definitely people that I wanted to put you guys in front of because I have a lot of friends that are looking to be owner occupied um, or just get into investments and start creating their own portfolios. Um, so today I have these guys here talking about the financial side of uh, getting into investments, um, thinking about location, credit, uh, network, and also the most important thing, education, which is the reason why all of you are here right now. Absolutely. So uh, all right here I got Jimmy. Thank you for joining. Appreciate the invite. And I got Frank right here. Thanks for having us. Uh, and I'm going to let them basically take the floor and uh, teach you guys a thing or two about getting into investments. Uh, first five tips. Jim, before that, why don't you just give like a 30 seconds about who you are? Yeah, 30 second overview. So this is cool because this is the first time that Frank and I are on video together. Nice. Right? So we do have a podcast that we push out every two weeks. So if you guys are interested, you can search for The Cashflow Kings on iTunes, Google Play, or Spotify. Mm -hmm. So that'll be a good source of information, but hopefully we'll lay a lot of good information to you today. So um, both Frank and I, um, you know, we, we have had corporate jobs or day jobs and we built portfolios outside of what we do in the day to day by purchasing multifamily cash flowing real estate on the pursuit to gaining some form of financial freedom. So during the video today, that's what we're going to look to lend to you guys. If you have that normal day job and you're looking to, you know, generate some passive income on the side via real estate, hopefully we can relay some helpful tips to aid in your pursuit to gain financial freedom. So if you can't find us for the podcast, just go to cashflowkings.com for our website, or we're also on uh, Facebook and Instagram under The Cashflow Kings. And so besides that, what's cool is that I have a background in education. So uh, I've taught people before how to make money with stocks, with real estate, uh, invest in people's businesses. So this is a good way to uh, keep going and growing. Frank's the king of all of that. Yes. I'm still in the early it stages, seems. but uh, we'll teach you. I mean, this is all stuff that we get really excited about. Like, investing is the name of the game. That's the fun stuff. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so let's see. The first one, we, you wanted five tips? Yeah, hit them right. if, if you want to keep going, I mean, whatever you got. There you go, there you go. <laughs> the king's go. right here. So, yeah, the so, floor is yours. Well, if you think about it, you don't want them to get confused and be overwhelmed the first time. Right, right. So, right. just go with the first one. Five, the first thing you really want to do is get your financial house in order. All right. What does yeah. that mean for them? Absolutely. You need to know how much you're making. You need to know how much you're spending. I don't care if you download an app. I don't care what you do. You need to have estimates. Where does the money come in and where is the money going? Mm -hmm. Because if you want to buy anything, you know, you're going to get a mortgage. You're going to borrow money from somebody. You're going to be paying that back. You need to know, can I actually afford to pay that back? Right. Most definitely. Good. Anything you want to add to that? I don't have much to add to that. I mean, so what Frank and I talk about all the time is that in order to be an investor, it's legitimately basic arithmetic. If you can add, subtract, divide, your money will multiply. I know Ooh. that sounds cliche. Ooh. Frank loves that one. Absolutely. But what Frank's talking about here is that the money that you make is what you add and the money that you spend is what you subtract, right? Mm -hmm. And the difference is what hopefully you can invest. And that's going to help you chase whatever financial freedom you're trying to attract. If you honestly want to invest, you might have to give up a couple things here or there. Like that nice new car? Absolutely. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, right? I guess I it depends not. on how much you make, right? Well, right, yeah, it right, depends right. on where you're at. But if you're just starting out, then you and I both know that every time you get a raise, you start spending more and spending more because you can enjoy it. And why not enjoy stuff? But if you really want to make that concept of financial freedom someday you have to save so much and invest it right because right, it's not doing anything for you sitting in a bank account right but that's a start right so saving is always oh, the course. start right so if you get in the habit of saving and then you want to take that nest egg and invest it from mm -hmm. there but that's always going to be the start of course what do they say the average person has can't afford a four hundred dollar expense in a month like a real problem they have to put it on a credit card or something else 
I'll tell you right now, I have three kids at home. All of them have savings accounts of at least $400. Nice. You know? And I'm not trying to blow up a spot or anything. I'm just trying to teach you guys that if I want them to be investors, okay? My 12-year-old owns stock right now. Not a ton. Few shares of Wendy's, something like that, just to get going because they are going to be owners. They are not just going to be employees. Good for you, though. I feel like we're going on a side tangent here. Oh, right? yeah. The income quadrant. So maybe we can get into that a little bit later. <laughs> yep. But, uh, so the second one is location. What do you got? Right, location. So when you purchase real estate, it's all about location. That's the one thing that you can't change in any transaction. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that you price for it appropriately. Yeah, you don't want to be... Um, you need to decide where do you want to live. If you're going to live in this first house... It's okay wherever you want to live. I don't care. Just as long as you're okay with it too, make sure you price it accordingly. So if you're buying a house in an exclusive neighborhood, you're going to pay a lot more. And that might not be your first purchase, even on a multifamily. If you're going to buy in a place that's an okay neighborhood, you buy a nice little three-family or triplex, depending on what part of the country we're in. It's the same thing. Okay? You want to make sure that you can afford it. Right, right. Yeah. Absolutely. And the big thing is, so you know when you're purchasing based on location, you can't change location, but if you're in a great neighborhood, you're going to pay a premium. Or if you're in not so good of a neighborhood, maybe there's um, an attractive reason why you're buying in that neighborhood. But the one thing that you can't change is the inside, right? So right. recognize the things that you can control and the things that you can't control and price accordingly. So a piece of expert advice here, especially if you've never owned a property before, you want to buy the worst house on a nice street. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You don't want to buy the nicest house on the worst street. Okay. It's that yeah. easy. Yep. Absolutely. Tip three. What, what do you got? got? No, what do you got? What do you got? <laughs> Keep rolling. Credit. We uh, got credit. So, yeah. So, let's go with credit. And when I say credit, we're going to say the whole thing. Like, that building of savings. So, we're talking about having the down payment. And having a decent credit. So, if you're paying your bills on time, you're going to improve your credit. Okay, yes. the worst thing that a banker lender wants is someone that's not going to pay them. Mm -hmm. They are risking hundreds of thousands of dollars on you. Okay? <laughs> yeah. So, guys, maintaining your credit is so easy nowadays. Credit Karma is free and they coach you on how to get better credit. And in the meantime, Revert back to the last video that Milano Homes did with... Well, we don't know if it'll be the last video from this one. Okay, this all right. Just throwing in there. Fair so enough, if you guys enough. want, uh, so, look at the uh, Real Estate Talk uh, episode number 10 with Carlos Thin. And if you guys want to talk to him and learn more about credit, go to Mr. Thin, Mr. Underscore Thin on Instagram. And I can, there's a, even a link there and everything. But anyways, keep going. Absolutely. So if you guys are having Quick shout out. an issue with credit karma and you're not understanding, reach out to Mr. Underscore Then on Instagram. He can help you out. But there are so many free tools to understanding credit. So one of the craziest things that I always hear as a landlord is, mm -hmm. I don't have good credit because I have student loans. I acquired over a million dollars worth of real estate with 70,000 worth of student loans. Why? Jeez. Because I have good credit. Just because you have student loans does not mean that you have bad credit. If you have bad credit because it's of student loans, it's it. because you didn't pay it. Right. Right? So, whether you need to get on a better payment plan or whatever it may be, revert back to step one in the video that we're on tonight and look at your expenses and your revenue in terms of what you're taking in and then start working on your credit from there. But always make sure that you make on-time payments. If you need to adjust it, reach out to Mr. Underscore then and we can help you guys out from there. But credit is crucial in yeah. terms of starting to build that nest egg and saving and investing from there. Mr. Thin said, uh, cash is king and if cash is king, then credit is queen. Absolutely. So, yeah, it was slick. But. This works perfect on the, on the next one. The fourth tip is networking. Yes. And you guys have to realize that Number one, your net worth is your network. And what that means is that all the people that you know are the people that will help you in your business, in your investing, in everything. So like you guys just mentioned Carlos. We all know Carlos. And we don't even know Carlos from each other. No. Just because we all real network. estate's, yeah, we're all networking. And real estate's a small world. And uh, we're stationed in Rhode Island here. And Rhode Island's a small world. I mean, I was talking to two people on Instagram today and I figured out connections to both of them. You know, we joke like two or three degrees of separation around here. Right. 
Yeah, so the, how true is that? Right. So the way that I can relate this is where I went to college, it was a massive school, right? So in Rhode Island, we have this kind of small mindset of like, why would you go somewhere so big? There's so many people. How are you going to figure it out, right? But when I got on campus, I went to some type of, um, I can't remember what it was, but it was some type of um, meeting where they coached us on how to make the campus very small. So mm -hmm. you join a group, you have classes, all of a sudden the campus becomes very small from networking, right? So I've taken the back into Rhode Island, where honestly, Rhode Island is a small network. So if you're doing the right things and putting in the work, you're going to be able to network with the right people, right? Mm -hmm. So exactly what Frank's saying. So if you're a mover and a maker, you're going to figure out who the other movers and makers are. So where does this bring value to them though? Like how does the network inside, like who, who are they potentially looking for? How are they getting to them? What do you guys recommend on that side in order to build the right network? Because we all know that it's quick and easy to find the wrong people and that could drag you down. They're like rocks. So obviously we know a good real estate agent. Great, yeah, right. I, would, I can't okay. wait to meet him. <laughs> but that's the big thing, right? So if you guys are watching this video, you already know a great real estate agent that can help you purchase a home that's gonna meet your, meet your needs, whether it be a single family home or a multifamily home that produces cash flow. But that's the name of the game, right? You need to figure out a realtor who is not a plus one transaction realtor just trying to get you to the closing table, but a realtor who's gonna provide you exactly what you're looking for to meet the needs for your family. Exactly, your goals. So to help out these first timers, as you're networking, as you're building these people, think about it. You're gonna need a plumber at some point. You're gonna need an electrician. You're going to need a roofer. You're going to need a closing attorney. You're going to need all these people. And you don't just have to just get them from your agent, which would help out. But as you build these relationships, as you go to meetings all the time, you're going to meet more people and find more connections. Yeah. Okay. I go to a real estate meeting at least once a week. Okay. That's not even counting all the networking. That's actual meetings. Right. Yeah. Okay. And you build, you build a whole group. I mean, I have... Let's see, just on my phone list on my phone, I have over a thousand contacts of different people just in real estate. I love that. I love that right well, now. That's awesome. The yeah. problem is I used to just write RE next to every single one. So if I type in RE, I can't search them anymore. Right. So now you have to type in RE and then dash roofing, dash plumbing. Because if there's an emergency, you need someone like that. If somebody's on vacation, somebody's hurt, you need a backup. And you need someone accountable. And knowing somebody firsthand is definitely going to help you figure Absolutely. that out. It's all about relationships. So. Also, you guys are just buying the first one, but I find half of my deals through networking. Okay, if there's a real estate deal out there, I'm not gonna guarantee I'm gonna sniff it out, but I like to buy stuff on sale. So if you ever have anything that's like, uh, you need to move, I'll be one to buy. You got your guys right here. <laughs> and I'm gonna fight yeah. you for it, because I'm I just laugh, because Frank's like the value king, right? Like, cash flow kings, but Frank's the value king. Like, if there's a deal, I mean, Frank tells a deal about lollipops that he bought. Like, I can't tell you when. But the lollipop deal just pops out of my head, so I think you get to tell that story. That's right? fine, yeah. So oh, wait, this um, is real. Yeah, yeah this, this real is real. Like, Dude, this I already deal with real <laughs> stories. This is pre discussed. This yeah. is all like <laughs> live right now. So uh, you know, like the gourmet lollipops. Okay, <laughs> so, regular price on them. So is now like he's talking about pasta cents. lollipops. I'm not familiar with, but I'll take your word for regular it. Regular price on gourmet. lollipops is like seventy five cents. But if you go to Walmart, you get them for two for a dollar. Okay. Well, I train my kids to buy value. Okay, no matter what it is. So we saw them on clearance for a nickel a piece. Now, so what that I bought 365 of them, you know? You know, it's just a great deal. $17 and whatever cents. And, you know, we're <laughs> going to flip them. We plan on flipping. This was not that long ago. Jimmy likes to bust down on those a while ago. <laughs> we, we have them and we're probably going to sell them for a quarter piece. Nice. So nice. this is like, one of, so I guess this is like stepping outside of what we want to talk about oh, tonight. Fine. But one of the big things that I always talk about is if someone can sell me on value, I'm probably more likely to make the purchase, right? So even if it's lollipops, like what's the value that it's gonna bring to me, mm -hmm. right? So even if you're not looking to potentially purchase a house, think about like, even if you're out buying a car or whatever it may be, whatever you buy on a daily basis, what's the value that it's gonna bring back to your family? And this may help with step one in terms of what are your expenses? So I like the hashtag always be networking but you should also always be looking for value, always be looking for opportunities. Yes. It do, I mean, obviously this is a real estate show, but you should be looking for opportunities everywhere. Right. Your mind, when you're driving down the road, should be thinking of opportunities. What can I do with that building? What could I do if that car is for sale? Could I make money on that? Right. Why not? Now, we don't have time for other stories, but I mean, I have bought quarters for less than a quarter before. <laughs> That's a whole nother issue. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't doubt it for a second. So the fifth one. Um, Hashtag value king. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm going to have to try to figure out how to post that up there. I'll, I'll tell you that story about the quotas another time. Um, we'll do it the next video. The fifth one is education. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Huge. Education Huge. is probably the most important one here. Okay. You need to know. You don't need to know like the exact type of carpet. You don't need to know the exact type of paint. That shows your experience. But you need to start having approximates in your mind about what things are going to cost, how much is it going to cost for an average sewer bill. Um, if you're living with your parents now, which is perfectly fine, find out from them. What does it cost in them for taxes? What does it cost in them for electricity? Because those are expenses that you're going to have to pay for if you house hack or if you own a multi. Yeah, so one of the craziest things that I think people get stuck on is that 90% of the things that you're going to try to do, somebody else has already done. And a majority of the time, they've already written a book on it. Mm -hmm. Or they've already posted it on the internet. So a majority of the things that you're going to try to do, you can go out and try to understand the value ahead of time. Right? So as long as you're willing to put in the work and try to search for what that value is, whether it's the cost of carpets or the cost of paint on the walls, you can figure that out. You just got to take the time and put in the work, right? So figure out what that cost is ahead of time, and that'll set you apart. When we say education here, I'm not talking about reinventing the wheel. I'm not talking about you building your own database from scratch. I'm talking about you going out and talking to people and finding information. Back to the networking. Mm -hmm. If you want to own a multi, go to some of the local real estate groups. Listen to the local podcasts. You know, go on YouTube, stuff like that. So... As we're sitting here, Jonathan's gonna kill a bookshelf to our left, right? <laughs> so if you guys see me looking down to the left, that's what I'm looking at, right? But books have helped me at you know, such a tremendous level. But that's one of the big things in education. Like it's not just showing up to school every day or going to get that college education or you know, help you get where you need to go. But there are so many other forms of education, whether it be reading books or listening to podcasts or going on YouTube. Right. Right, I, I'm kind That's of the, all I do every single day. I drive uh, whenever I'm driving. I'm throwing on that YouTube. I mean, I pay for Google on a monthly basis, so that way I don't have to go through the commercials. Yeah, and boom! I'm just firing off YouTube all day long. Most people see me around with like headphones in my ears all day. Yeah, I don't have time to sit there and read a book uh, all day long or at all times of the day. But I can always sit there and listen. Yep. And I don't play music like I used to because everybody knows out there that does watch me is that I, I'm into the dance thing. But I don't do that anymore. I'm too busy plugged away into this stuff, trying to learn, trying to get to the cash flow kings level over here. Um, and, and learn what I need to learn so that way I can up my game, which is another reason why all of you are here trying to take on that education and trying to learn. Um, and just to throw in else, like in addition to all that, if you guys do add them on like Instagram and Facebook, they are sitting there providing you that education on a regular basis. They're putting constant content out there. And once again, that's why I'm bringing you guys here because I want you guys to be aware that there's tools like this out there and that you're not by yourself. And like Frank just said, you want to talk about models? You got your models right here. I mean, no, they're not your French models and everything, but <laughs> <laughs> they're your models nonetheless, all right? Um, these are the guys you want to follow. These are the guys you want to imitate. These are the guys you want to watch and learn from. I mean, contact them and just say, hey, what do you guys got? And see what they had to offer because that's what I did and look at them, they're here. They're here for me. And I'm not sitting here paying them to be here. They're here because they want to be here, all right? Um, and that's the kind of people you want to surround yourself with. So when you talk about networking, you talk about education, you talk about that whole entire thing that we just spoke about, I mean, you got it sitting here in your hands and you're going to have that at your disposal now. Um, yeah, so one of the big things, right? So most people, they hear that radio advertisement. Do you want to make an extra $5,000 part-time? Oh, yeah, that easy money. That education that they're going to sell you, you're going to go in for a Saturday, they're going to try and upsell you on the next time. The next Saturday they're in town, they're going to try and upsell you for $1,000. That information that they're going to relay to you when you pay those thousands of dollars, you can find online anywhere, mm -hmm. whether it be podcasts, this video, numerous different sources. So I would say, get on the hunt. You're gonna be able to find it out there. As long as you're willing to put in the work, you're gonna be able to chase whatever you wanna achieve. Boom. Yeah, if you put in the work, you can do almost anything, okay? I know plenty of people that have quit their job within 10 years investing in real estate. Yeah. It's not overnight. You know, what do they say? That overnight success only took 13 years to get, you know? It's not even overnight, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's work, but it's worth it as well. Absolutely. You know? Definitely. <laughs> Love it. I figured I'd just jump in with that. Yeah, yeah no, <laughs> uh, But no, um, 
I guess uh, that that's pretty much everything. I mean, hold on. I guess I'll. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 wait. We gotta ask the other two questions too. Oh, so see, I don't even know about the oh, questions. So you good. might be scaring us here, but uh, you know how we always like to provide value. Yeah. So we'll give it a bonus tip here. Oh. The bonus tip is goals. Okay. I don't care what your goals yeah. are. Set goals. You want to buy a house within a year? Write it down. Put it on paper and set up steps in order to get there. Okay. I have goals. This is my first real year having goals, and it's helped me so much. Okay? Yeah. And uh, yeah. Jim, I know you had a lot of goals last year with the book reading. Yeah. And you, your, your brain. I mean, I think your head's a little bigger just from that brain, all that knowledge <laughs> you've added. You know. <laughs> I appreciate the compliment. So I'm going to say the biggest thing that Frank said is put your goals on paper. So I'm huge on visualization. So I'm always talking to myself about what I want to achieve. But being able to see those goals on paper and being able to hold yourself accountable on a daily basis is huge. So mm -hmm. Frank jokes about my reading goal, but legitimately, at the beginning of every year, I go into Excel and I print down a graph and I track the number of pages I read each day because that's how I track my overall reading goal. And I know that that sounds really parochial in the approach. However, that's what led me to success in my reading goal. Mm -hmm. So for three years, I set a reading goal. I want to read 12 books in a year. Those first three years, I never met that goal. I read six, seven, and six books the first three years individually. That fourth year that I set my page per day goal, I read 25 books in a year, right? So I'm not saying this to impress you, but impress on you. If you are this deliberate in setting your goals, you guys can achieve these things too. Yeah, so what's cool about that, now that you've built those goals, now that you've built this business, I mean, you can do a lot more things. You want to go down to Texas see an Ohio State game? It can happen. You want <laughs> it to go to Mi you want yeah. to go to Miami to go see 10x? It can happen. It happens. You know stuff like I'm going to Egypt as on a business trip. It's happening like next happen. week. Yes, two weeks. Okay, two weeks. Yeah. awesome, awesome. So yeah, setting goals will help you grow, and once you grow, you can do some of these things that you wanted to do. Those dreams. Awesome. Awesome. Now I got to get into the quick questions. Let's go. Let's go. All right. I, I, I kind of spoke to you guys about this earlier, but. For you guys, um, I'm going to start with uh, Jimmy first. How did you get started? Yeah. If you so, can say it in like a, uh, like a few minutes type of... Yeah, a few minutes. So honestly, so came out of college, worked for Fidelity Investments. Hopefully they don't sue me for dropping their name. I'll leave that <laughs> out. Um, I failed the Chartered Financial Analyst exam. It cost me four grand to study for the Chartered Financial Analyst exam. I got started late. I scored in the top 10% of the failures. So I'm looking at taking level one of the CFA exam a second time and I say, well, do I spend four grand on the exam or do I spend five, six grand to buy my first multifamily? So I think based on this video, you guys know where I wound up, right? How's the work feel working fidelity? It was, t you know what? I learned a lot. It was difficult, but I learned a ton and I'm grateful for the opportunity. And also financially, those guys set me up really well to nice. do what I do now. But the soft skills that I learned in that role, I have success in the company that I run today. So I wouldn't change it for the world, but damn, it was tough. Yeah, I'm sure. It was not easy. I'm sure. And did you do some of that at the same exact time? Were you already starting to get into thinking about investments and such while working there? Yeah, absolutely. So I caught a bad review and that's where I launched my property management company, right? So for the first year and a half that the property management company was live, I had a partner who worked full time and I am so thankful for what he did for us. And then when we grew a year and a half later, I realized it was the time to jump. And right. then when we made the jump, that's when we really saw growth because we both focused full time to grow the company to provide value for our clients. So at some point you had to, you had to realize that there was a, a moment where you were just at full capacity and in order to help that grow, you just need to let something go. Yeah. And there's no, I would tell you that there is no definitive moment, but what you need to get comfortable with is bungee jumping, right? So the horizon going? Yeah, that's exactly it. So I sat down with this investor um, and he was, he now lives in Atlanta. I won't say his name to, you know, keep it kind of discreet. Mm -hmm. But uh, he shared something with me that will stick with me for the rest of my life. So he was a consultant for a very well regarded consulting firm in the United, well actually worldwide. Mm -hmm. Young kid did very well for himself. And he said, Jim, it's just like bungee jumping. He said, you just gotta go for it. He said, it's scary as shit when you jump. But he goes, guess what? When you're in midair, it's the best feeling in the world. And what's the worst case, what's the worst thing that's gonna happen? Like the bungee's gonna catch you, right? And I know there's the worst things that can happen, but. Well, we're not going that more, you gotta have, you gotta have, right? You gotta have confidence in yourself. So where I was stuck is when I quit my job, 
<laughs> I own three different buildings, right? My mortgage is total probably close to 6,000 a month. And I just had the confidence in myself that the worst thing that could happen was that I had zero dollars. But guess what? If I wound up in the spot that I had zero dollars, I now had the game plan of how to get back to where I was versus starting where I originally started, where I had no game plan. I already knew how to level back up and I had the network to get back there more quickly. Bang. Thank you. Your turn. Oh, uh, geez. I would say just listen to the podcast coming up. But no. <laughs> <laughs> now, so basically, um, my dad had a couple properties. But um, I remember being on a uh, doorstep showing uh, a house at the age of six. And uh, it was so awesome at the time. But uh, my dad specifically didn't want me to um, to do real estate. He didn't want me to do that. He wanted me to go and uh, get a, a real job and get a real degree. He wanted something to be proud of. So um, I actually didn't take the real estate route for a while. And uh, what happened was is uh, he died when I was in my teens and uh, I, I wanted to uh, go with his memory and I became a school teacher. And, uh, but in my 20s, I read uh, that great book that everybody loves, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And it really motivated me to get into real estate. Mm -hmm. Okay, and do business stuff too. Do a little bit of investing here, there, stocks, everything else. But I love the game of real estate. Okay. I can see. And uh, Jim knows too. So uh, even though I love the game of real estate, sometimes I, I took some jumps a little too quickly. Maybe I wasn't properly bungeed, if you know what hey. I mean. <laughs> hey, but I bet you learned a lot. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's a big failure thing. is also a good thing. Yeah. If, if, if uh, what do you call it? If managed properly, failure is definitely a, a big educational tool that people can leverage, and they're too afraid to go. So through. I used to tell the kids at school that failure is okay, and I know I was the only teacher that ever said that. Mm -hmm. But um, I used to joke with them the fact that, did you ever fall off a bike when you started riding a bike? And yeah. even they say no, I say, okay, well, before you can remember, when you first started walking, you probably fell down a couple times, and then you got right back up. You didn't say, oh my God, I'm never gonna walk again, right. you know? Yeah. That's and that's what it is with real estate. So mm -hmm. my first deal, I lost a ton of money. My second deal, I lost money. So my first deal, we bought our uh, primary residence top of the market. Um, it has it lost half its value within five years after we bought it and it, you know 12 14 whatever years later it still hasn't come back mm -hmm. in, in my specific neighborhood which is fine I mean we're gonna live there forever we love where we live the neighborhoods great the neighbors are great everything else but I mean it was kind of hard to lose that much money and to try to persuade your wife that real estate's the answer <laughs> you know yeah. so that's that's the first one the second one um, I didn't work on the education enough, mm -hmm. I didn't work on the location enough, and I didn't work on the networking enough, and I went down and bought um, some vacant land at a, a big property auction oh, in wow. New York City. Oh wow. And I lost like $20,000 on that deal. And uh, would that crater some people? Absolutely. How did you pick yourself back up from it? Um, I told myself that I had the right financials and I was strong enough to overcome it. And uh, you just keep getting out there and learning. Mm -hmm. You learn from your mistakes. Just kept moving forward. Just yeah. Grind it out. And now the benefit now is that because I'm lucky enough to have so many deals out there and be doing so well, I can afford to take those risks. And it's like, so what? You know? It's not as big of a deal now. Because while you're not there yet, and Jim, you're pretty close, a lot of the players, when they start to do it, they're playing Monopoly in real life. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay? But it takes years of work, years of experience, years of time. You can't just jump out and say, oh wow, I'm gonna be on 50 units within two years. Okay, some people might, yeah. but let's be honest here, it takes a lot of work. Absolutely. So for the new person that, let's say they don't have the financial backing per se, as far as like the, the good job, but they they have a good enough job to get them into their first owner occupied, what's your recommendation to them? for getting into their first property. As, a, as an owner occupied to start building that financial wealth, um, what would be that one big tip for them to kick in? So I think there's I think there's two ways to go with this. The first one is if you're doing owner occupied, just your own house. The second one, I think if you're doing house hacking, where you're owner occupied one of the units. Read my mind. I think house hacking is huge. So house hacking is when you buy a multifamily and live in one of the units. So the rule of thumb that I use, so in order to own or occupy a property, you're gonna buy either a two, a three, or a four unit property. So I always tell people, hopefully this isn't too blunt, but a two family, unless you can steal it, 
you shouldn't house hack it. You're mm -hmm. not going to be able to make money or be in the financial position or get yourself to the financial position that you want to be in. Unless you're inappropriately like, renting by the bedroom or something. But yeah, hey, it's a lot of work. Yeah, if you're creative, there's Lots always ways. Work. Legal, it's a lot illegal, you choose, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, a three family, if you buy a three family correctly, now at this stage of the cycle in the market, it may be more difficult, but not impossible. If you mm -hmm. buy a three family, you should be able to buy a three family and live there for free. So in terms of your mortgage and some of your utilities should be paid for. And then the rule of thumb is if you buy a four family, you should be paying yourself to live there, right? So you should live in your unit for free and then cash flowing a little bit on top of the utilities that you may be paying. That's great advice. Absolutely, yeah. Now, the main thing that I'm thinking, besides everything you talked about, is that if you educate, if you do all these five tips and the bonus tip we talked about, the whole concept of taking action. We have Absolutely. so many people that, that get stuck in yeah. analysis paralysis or they're just not working hard enough. They're not looking at enough properties. Absolutely. And I know right now there's not enough properties for sale on the open market in right. our area anyway. You still have to look at them. Yes. Okay. I don't care if you're looking at 50 properties within a one month period. Don't tell me that you're going to look at two houses and say, I'm the king. Well, I wasn't or, thinking that. I was thinking that's more. That's a deal, right? Like, yeah, oh, that's a deal. Right. Yeah. You, you do not you put it off from the first one, no matter what. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I don't care how big of a score it is. If you think it's a score, call two other people and say, let them look at it and see if they yep. think it's a score. Two other too. people. <laughs> yeah, no, I guess I'd be honest, but yeah, we appreciate yeah, no, it. But, seriously. Um, and if it is a deal, I'll pay you if you found the deal. I'll give you money. I'll give you a referral fee. I'll give you anything. I've paid people three, four, five thousand dollars for another deal for me. Yep. Whatever. No problem at all. Because you're going to get a lot of phone calls now. No, well, no, seriously, if you have a deal, the money is always going to follow. Mm -hmm. I know that sounds cliche, but it's the truth. If it is a legitimate deal that can make money for an investor, somebody will pay you for that deal. Well, not only that, but we have the networking connections. I mean, if it was a deal, like if someone walked up and said, I have a 50 unit deal, I got people that'll pay millions. Yeah. Absolutely. You know? Same here. They're just on a yeah, phone so call. We don't have the capital. We know somebody that could clear that deal for you and get you paid. But we're talking still small right now. But just, I want to yeah, make sure right, they right, understand right. you can grow. The concepts are there. It's available. Take action. Well, absolutely. So that was a lot of information and that went further than the five tips. And I actually appreciate you guys for sharing everything cool. that you did share. We went completely off the agenda, but I think <laughs> it was extremely beneficial. Uh, as always, I felt like I learned um, a crap load today. And so once again, I thank you guys Definitely. for coming by and cool. uh, doing Definitely. this with me. No problem, um, I have fun. I'm sure all of you are gonna appreciate it. Um, I missed this at the beginning and these guys reminded me right afterwards, but I let them keep going. If you're on YouTube, subscribe, hit that little bell, get that notification when we post up something new. So that way you're always on top of all the educational stuff that Bolano Home is throwing through. Um, catch us on Instagram at Bolano.home, Facebook Bolano.home. You can catch us on Twitter and Tumblr, all the same stuff. Um, these guys, Cashflow Kings, and I believe there's one place where it's The Cashflow Kings. Yes. Uh, Instagram which, and Facebook, The yes. Cashflow Kings. Boom. So uh, definitely go check them out. I'm going to put them in the description. Um, what else am I missing? That is it. Once again, thank you guys. I think we're good. I'm going to try to bring these guys back again. To your success. Well,